This is Geometry Unit 11, Lesson 5 on Cylinders and Prisms. We're going to look at a cylinder first. A cylinder is a close figure that has two bases that are congruent and parallel with lateral surf surfaces connecting them. Okay, so we can see the picture right here of a cylinder. Um, the base here and the base here, or here and here and here and here, are bases that are congruent and parallel. The top and the bottom are exactly the same, and they're also parallel to each other. And lateral surfaces are the part that is connecting them. So if we have a right cylinder, the later, lateral surfaces, like here and here, are perpendicular to the bases. It makes a right angle. Basically, it's telling you it's straight up and down. If it's an oblique cylinder, you can see right here that the bases are parallel and congruent, but this is leaning. The, the lateral surface are not perpendicular to the bases. So you can see with a cylinder, most of the time the cylinder, the base is a circle, but occasionally you get a different shape. Um, you, a right circular cylinder is straight up and down. An oblique circular cylinder is leaning a little bit. So your, ba your lateral surface is not perpendicular to the base. So those are what a cylinder is. All right, now the other shapes we have are called prisms. They are a cylinder with bases that are polygons. Now they are usually named by the shape of their base. So, for example, A right here, this has a base that's a rectangle, so it's called a rectangular prism. B is a hexagonal prism, its base is a hexagon. You can see right here, base, base, those are hexagons. Uh, this one is a pentagon base, pentagon base, so this is called a pentagonal prism. And this is a square prism because the base is a square. This is a square and this is a square. Okay, now... The bases are the top and bottom in this case, but they're the two shapes that make up the end point. End um, shapes is what I should say. The lateral sides are perpendicular to the bases in a right prism. So A and B right here, the rectangular prism and the hexagonal prism, this is a right prism because it's perpendicular to the lateral sides are perpendicular to the base. It's straight up and down. C and D are considered oblique prisms because the lateral sides are not perpendicular to the bases. They kind of lean a little bit to the side. So you can see that these are straight up and down, making them right prisms. These are oblique prisms. Okay, now some more vocabulary about a prism. The bases and lateral sides are called faces. So the bases can be any polygon. You could have a square, a rectangle, a triangle, a circle, any shape that you want. The lateral faces will be parallelograms, but if it's a right prism, it'll be a rectangle. So you can see right here, these are the lateral faces. It's the four parallelograms that make up the sides that are not the bases. Those are called the lateral faces. Notice that this is an oblique, so it's leaning. This will be a parallelogram. And if it is um, here, the lateral faces here would be rectangles for these two right here. You can see this is a lateral face and this is a lateral face. They would be rectangles. So the bases and lateral sides are called the faces. The intersections of the faces are called the edges, basically where the lateral sides meet. So here, the dotted line here, here, and here. Those are all called lateral faces. It's where the um, edges are. Edges at bases are called base edges. So top here on the uh, where the top meets the Lateral sides is called the base edges. They're on the top and the bottom. And edges between lateral face or lateral edges. And lateral edges are parallel and congruent. So this and this will be parallel. They will also be congruent. Same here. They will be congruent. It doesn't matter which one you have. And where the edges intersect, which would be here, 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 and here, 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 and here, and here, they are called the vertices. So the lateral faces are the whole shape. The edges are the, where they meet each other. So that is the parts of a prism. Another important property of prisms and cylinders is all cross sections or slices parallel to the bases will have the same shape, which is the shape of the base. Okay, so basically what this is saying, if I took a slice anywhere out of either of these polygons, the length of, or excuse me, the shape of the slice will be the same as the shape of the base. If I slice this out, this is going to be a hexagon. If I take a slice out of this, this is going to be a circle. Any cross section parallel to the bases are the same shape. Base is a circle, slice is a circle. Base is a hexagon, slice is a hexagon. All right, now that we know what cylinders and prisms are, we're going to be finding the volumes of them. 
Now remember, they are three-dimensional unit uh, figures, so they will have volume in three dimensions. Now remember, with lengths are measured in units of length. So if you have inches, centimeters, feet, meters, whatever, it's a single unit. So if you're finding the perimeter, it would be a length. So those would be single units. Areas are measured in square units, square inches, centimeters square, feet squared, meters squared, whatever. So one square unit. Volumes are measured in cubic units. So it would be cubic inches, cubic centimeters, cubic feet, meters cubed, whatever you happen to have. You are seeing how many little boxes, three-dimensional boxes, will go into a space. So if I wanted to find the volume of the rectangular prism, let's think about this. Each one of these little corner pieces here are considered a little box. All right, and this is a four boxes this way, six boxes this way, and then there are five boxes high. So it's a four by six layer on the bottom, which would be 24. And then there are five of them going up. So this would be one layer, like so. Then you would have the second layer here. I'm a little off with the highlighter, but you get my idea. This would be the third layer. And then the fourth layer, like so. And then the fifth layer, like this. Now each one of these is made up of 24 blocks. And there are five layers. So this is going to have a volume of 24 times 5, or 120 cubic units. All right, so 120 cubes would fit to make this volume. So you can see we actually, the volume of rectangular prism formula would actually be the length times the width times the height, LWH. So this is the rectangular prism. This only works for rectangular prisms. It is actually the area of the base times the height. It's because the area is length times width. All right. Now that is the only general, uh, different formula that we need to know to figure out rectangular prisms, length times width times height. When you get to a general prism or a cylinder, there's a formula that goes with that. If you are finding the volume of a prism or a cylinder, it doesn't matter what shape the base is in or whether it's right or oblique. The formula is V equals capital BH. Now capital B stands for something. It stands for the area of the base. So if this would be a cylinder, it would be pi r squared would be the area of the base. So you have to know your formulas. V equals BH is on your reference sheet, but it says BH. It doesn't say it's a general formula. It doesn't say which formula you have to use for each one. You have to know which one goes with which. And H in this case stands for the height of the prism or cylinder. The whole height, the distance between the bases distance between the bases. That is the height. Okay, so your height here, your base is a hexagon, your base is a hexagon, the height would be the distance between the bases. This is a cylinder, this is the circle, this is a circle, this is the difference between the distance between the bases. That would be the height. Okay, so now that you know that, you have to be aware of what uni units you're going to, excuse me, which figures you're going to be using. All right, an above ground pool covers an oval area of 185 square feet and is filled to a depth of four feet. So when you fill this pool up, down here to the bottom, its depth is going to be four feet. Okay, so what is the volume of water in the pool? All right, your form, general formula for volume is V equals capital B, area of the base, times the height. Well, it says the area of the base, which is oval, is 185. And then it's filled four feet, which is the height. So this would be four. All right, now notice this is square feet. This is feet. Square feet times feet, 185 times 4 is 740 cubic feet. So that is 740 cubic feet. Now, because we already knew the area here, it was given, we didn't have to figure that out. Later on in a different problem, we'll have to figure out what the area of the base is based on what kind of figure we have. All right, now the other thing we have is density. 
If the density of water is about 62.3 pounds per cubic foot, what is the total weight of the water in the pool? The formula for density is mass over volume. Mass is basically the weight. So if this pool, it weigh, uh, the density of water is 62.3 pounds per cubic foot, each cubic foot of water may weigh 62.3 pounds. What's the total weight of the water in the pool? All right, so it's following this formula, 62.3 is equal to the mass, which is what we're looking for. The weight is the mass over the volume. We found the volume was 740 cubic feet. All right, so if I cross multiply here, we get 62.3 times 740. So that means the water weighs approximately 46,102 pounds per cubic foot. So that's what this is going to weigh. So density is mass over volume. All right. Find the volume of a right circular cylinder with a radius of 4 and a height of 12. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a picture. A right circular cylinder means it's going to have bases that are circles. So we're going to draw two circles. All right, so a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. And since this is a right circular cylinder, when we connect the bases, they should be perpendicular. Not a perfect drawing, but you get my idea. Okay, the radius is 4, and the height is 12. Because this is straight up and down, the height is going to be 12. Think of a soda can, pretty much. Okay, now the general form for volume is BH, where B is the area of the base. What kind of bases did this have? It has circle bases. So what is the area of the circle? So it's the area of the circle times the height. All right, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is actually going to be pi r squared times the height. So this b is actually the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. All right, so using this formula, because we had to know b was the area of the circle, it's going to be pi times 4 squared, that's the radius, times the height, which is 12. All right, 4 squared is 16, so this is pi times 16 times 12. Now, in terms of pi, this will be 192 pi cubic, unit, cubic centimeters. Now, if you want to evaluate that, you would put 192 pi in your calculator. So 192 pi, and that's approximately 603.19 cubic centimeters. So the base, you had to know the area of the base was the circle, pi r squared, times the height, because that the base is a circle. Okay, the last one is the volume of the prism at right. Now this one's a little bit tricky because you have to know which ones are the bases and which one is the height. All right, now looking at this picture, we remember that the lateral edges of any prism are going to be rectangles or parallelograms. So the bases on this are actually triangles. This is a triangular prism. So the bases are triangles. So this is a base, and this is a base. So which one would be the height? The height is actually 15, because it's the difference between the bases. All right, so the general formula for the volume of the prism is V equals capital BH. All right, so your base in this one is going to be area of the triangle times the height. Okay, so we know the H is going to be 15 right here, but we need to figure out the area of the triangle. Okay, what don't we have in the area of the triangle? Let me draw the triangle here separately so we can see it. This is your base, the triangle. This is 13, this is 13, and this is 10. Okay, so see if you can figure out what the height is going to be, and we will work out uh, the rest of this in class tomorrow.